I couldn't wait to tell my husband and mother-in-law about my recent promotion on our third wedding anniversary. I was giddy with joy. But everything I believed to be true was destroyed by what transpired afterward. Rather than experiencing joy, I encountered an intensity of rage that left me speechless. My husband sprang up in an instant and gave me a hard slap across the face, which left me reeling on the floor in shock and pain. Something inside me flared with ferocious determination at that instant. I knew I had to get out of this toxic relationship, but I also wanted retribution. And in a matter of weeks, my whole life was going to transform in ways I could never have predicted. You will not be able to speak after what happened next. I live in Houston, Texas, and work as a financial analyst. My name is Helen. It's amusing how quickly things can change in life. Prior to the evening of my third wedding anniversary, I used to believe that everything in my life was going according to plan and that nothing could go wrong. I have clear memories of that evening. I was excited as the sun was sinking and the city took on a golden glow. I had been working hard for the past few years at work, and I had just received a substantial promotion. I had planned to celebrate this occasion over supper with my husband, Mark, and his mother, Mrs. Davis. I was hoping for a toast, sun smiles, and maybe some laughs to commemorate my accomplishment. With its delicate lighting and the sound of glasses gently clinking all around, the restaurant exuded elegance. I sat at our table and enjoyed the company and the settings for a moment. I had always believed that Mark was my strongest ally. When I worked up the guts to tell him, he grinned at me and had excitement in his eyes. Mark, Mrs. Davis, I said, excitement pounding in my chest. I have wonderful news to share. I've been given a senior financial analyst position. For a little while, the words lingered in the atmosphere, and I eagerly anticipated the ovation, applause, or encouraging remarks, at the very least. But all I heard was a deafening quiet. Mrs. Davis's face grew serious, and a shiver went down my spine. Is this the reason we brought him up? At last, she lost her cool and spoke in a contentious tone. To have his wife's career eclipse him, I blinked, taken aback by her response. I had anticipated pride, or at the very least a faint smile. Rather, I had the impression that I had broken the law. Mark shifted in his chair uneasily. The turmoil was seen in his eyes. He was torn between his mother and his wife, yet he still wanted to help me. Mom, Helen has some wonderful news. We ought to honor her accomplishment, he murmured feebly, his tone lacking sincerity. Mrs. Davis would have none of it. Helen, how about establishing a family? Do you believe that a promotion could ever truly replace a child's joy? Her remarks cut deep, and I was overcome with rage. I inhaled deeply while attempting to keep my cool. Mrs. Davis, I think I can manage my career and family. I value this promotion very much. Mark avoided my eyes and cast his gaze down at the table. He said, Helen, maybe we should take what Mom is saying into consideration. His tone was aloof and icy. My heart fell. I didn't think I'd married a supportive partner like this. Try not to cry, I answered. I can't just quit my job to satisfy your mother's expectations. I should be respected for all of my effort. The tension in the air increased, and I could feel other diners' eyes on us. I saw a change in Mark's attitude as his level of frustration increased. Helen, you're being irrational. You are not my rival. You are my wife. Can you not see that, please? His remarks were more hurtful than any physical impact, like a slap in the face. Mark, this isn't a competition. My voice wavered as I said, I'm trying to share my success with you, 
and I could feel tears starting to form in my eyes. Mrs. Davis narrowed her eyes and leaned in closer. You should consider what's best for our family, not just what you want out of your career. I felt confined. Driven by rage and desperation, I said, This is who I am, and I won't give it up. Not for anyone. I was battling for my identity as much as my career. Mark abruptly sprang to his feet, his body tense. You're not getting it, are you? Your career is the most important thing to you. This is sacrifice, the essence of marriage. I could see then how his mother had shaped his perception of our marriage, turning it into something stifling. We were a team, I had always thought, but now I felt alienated in my own life. I shot back, feeling the heat rising in my cheeks. Sacrifice shouldn't mean losing yourself. My dreams are worthy too. As the debate came to a head, Mark suddenly and shockingly raised his hand and hit me across the face. Conversations in the restaurant were muffled as the sound reverberated throughout. Startled and perplexed, I collapsed onto the ground. The world seemed to stop for a little minute. I was in shock at what had transpired. My cheek ached from the smack and the betrayal of someone I loved, and my heart was racing. As I lay there, tears streaming down my face, I realized that this was a turning point. The trust I once had in Mark shattered in an instant, and I knew deep down that I couldn't stay in this toxic environment any longer. I pushed myself up from the floor, my heart pounding. I felt a surge of determination rising within me. I couldn't let this define me. I would not be a victim. I would reclaim my life. The evening had begun with excitement, but it ended in chaos. As I looked at Mark and Mrs. Davis, I understood that this was not just an argument. It was a wake-up call. I needed to take action to break free from the chains of expectations and start living for myself. As I left the restaurant, I felt a mix of emotions swirling inside me. Anger, fear, and a flicker of hope. It was time to make a change, and I was ready to confront whatever lay ahead. I stumbled out of the restaurant, my heart racing and my mind a whirlwind of emotions. The cool night air hit my face like a splash of cold water, grounding me in reality. I couldn't believe what had just happened. I felt humiliated, not just by Mark's actions, but by the whole evening's unfolding. It was supposed to be a night of celebration, but it had turned into a nightmare. As I drove home, I replayed the events over and over in my mind. How had it come to this? The man I loved had struck me, and his mother's influence had turned him against me. I thought about the life we had built together and the dreams I had held on to. I felt lost, like a ship adrift at sea. When I got home, the silence was deafening. I dropped my keys on the table and sat down, still in shock. The walls felt like they were closing in on me. I could hear the faint sound of my heart beating in my ears. I pulled out my phone and stared at the screen. There were no messages from Mark, no apologies, no concern, nothing. I called Rachel, my close friend and colleague. I needed someone to talk to, someone who would understand. After a few rings, she picked up. Helen, is everything okay? Her voice was filled with concern. No, Rachel, it's not okay. You won't believe what just happened. I said, my voice trembling. What happened? Are you all right? She pressed. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. I announced my promotion at our anniversary dinner, and it all went downhill from there. Mrs. Davis exploded, and then Mark. He hit me. Silence hung in the air for a moment. Oh my God, Helen, are you hurt? She asked, her voice rising with alarm. I'm fine physically, but emotionally. I don't know, I admitted. 
I feel like everything I believed about our marriage has just crumbled. Listen, you need to get out of that situation. You don't deserve to be treated like that. Rachel said firmly, her words a lifeline pulling me back from the edge of despair. I know, but it's complicated. We've been together for years, and I thought we were happy, I replied, my voice cracking. Sometimes the people we love can change, especially under pressure. You need to think about what's best for you now, she urged. As I listened to Rachel, a wave of realization washed over me. I had sacrificed so much for this relationship, and now I was left feeling lost and alone. I think I need to talk to a divorce attorney. I said finally, the words tasting foreign yet liberating. Do it. I'll be here for you every step of the way, Rachel assured me. You deserve to find happiness. After hanging up, I felt a mix of fear and determination. The thought of taking that step terrified me, but it was also empowering. I knew I had to reclaim my life, and that meant making hard decisions. The next morning, I woke up with a heavy heart, but a clearer mind. I called a divorce attorney recommended by Rachel. Hello, my name is Helen. I need to file for divorce. I said as soon as the call connected. Understood. Can you come in this afternoon to discuss the details? The attorney replied. Yes, I'll be there, I said, hanging up with a sense of resolve. I was taking control, one step at a time. At work, I tried to maintain some semblance of normalcy, but I could feel the weight of the previous night's events pressing down on me. My boss, Mr. Roberts, noticed my distraction during our morning meeting. Helen, is everything all right? You seem a bit off today, he asked gently. I'm dealing with some personal issues, but I'll manage, I replied, forcing a smile. You know you can talk to me if you need to, he said, his voice filled with understanding. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. I appreciate it, I said, feeling grateful for his support. It was comforting to know I had allies at work. Later that day, Rachel surprised me with lunch. I thought you could use a break, she said, sliding into the chair across from me. How did the meeting with the attorney go? I haven't gone yet, I admitted. I'm nervous about what's next. Just take it one day at a time. You're stronger than you think, Helen, she encouraged. I felt a glimmer of hope at her words. As the afternoon wore on, I found myself lost in my work, trying to escape the emotional turmoil squirreling within me. I focused on the numbers, the spreadsheets, the analysis, anything to keep my mind occupied. Finally, the time came for my appointment with the attorney. I took a deep breath before stepping into the office, my heart pounding. The attorney, a middle-aged woman named Karen, welcomed me with a warm smile. Let's get started, Karen said, her tone professional yet empathetic. Tell me what's been going on. I shared my story, detailing the emotional and physical struggles I had faced. As I spoke, I felt a sense of empowerment growing within me. I was no longer just a victim. I was taking action to change my life. Helen, it sounds like you've made the right choice for yourself. You deserve to be in a healthy, supportive environment, Karen said, her words resonating deeply. After our meeting, I left the office feeling a mix of anxiety and exhilaration. I had taken a significant step toward reclaiming my life. The path ahead would be challenging, but I was ready to face it head on. I would no longer be defined by someone else's expectations. I would find my voice, my strength, and my freedom. The weeks following the anniversary dinner were a whirlwind of emotions and hard decisions. After my meeting with Karen, my divorce attorney, I began the difficult process of detaching my life from Mark's. Each day felt like a mix of dread and hope, 
a constant battle between my fears and the determination to reclaim my identity. At work, I buried myself in projects. With my promotion still fresh in my mind, I focused on proving myself, not only to my colleagues, but to myself. Mr. Roberts, my boss, continued to check in on me. Helen, you're doing excellent work. If you need to talk, I'm here, he said one afternoon. Thanks, Mr. Roberts. I appreciate your support, I replied, feeling grateful for his understanding. One evening, Rachel, my closest friend, texted me. Let's celebrate your new beginning. How about drinks this weekend? Her message brought a smile to my face. I needed this, an escape, a chance to feel normal again. Absolutely. I could use some fun, I replied, excitement bubbling within me. That Saturday, we met at a lively bar downtown. The atmosphere was warm, and I felt a rush of energy as I walked in. Rachel waved from a corner table, and I joined her, feeling the weight of the past few weeks start to lift. Cheers to new beginnings, Rachel exclaimed, raising her glass. To new beginnings, I echoed, clinking my glass against hers. We chatted about work, my promotion, and the future. I revealed my plan to start a mentorship program for young women in finance. I want to help them navigate challenges like I've faced. I shared that's a brilliant idea. You'd be an amazing mentor, Rachel encouraged. As the night progressed, I felt lighter and more like myself. I was rediscovering my passions and dreams. The laughter and connection with Rachel were just what I needed to reignite my spirit. The following week, I met with Helen, the industry contact who had invited me to speak at a conference. I'm so glad you decided to join us, Helen. Your story can inspire many, she said as we settled into a cafe. I hope so. I want to empower others to find their voice, I replied, feeling a surge of determination. As the conference date approached, I carefully prepared my speech, weaving in the lessons I had learned. The night before, I'd practiced in front of the mirror, feeling a mix of nerves and excitement. On the day of the conference, as I walked onto the stage, the weight of the moment enveloped me. The room was filled with women, all eager to hear what I had to say. My heart raced, but as I began to speak, I felt a sense of purpose fill me. I stand here today as a survivor, someone who has faced the storm and emerged stronger. I began. I shared my journey, and the audience responded with nods of understanding. I know what it's like to feel trapped, to think your dreams don't matter. But your voice matters, and you deserve to pursue your passions. I said, my conviction growing stronger. When I finished, the applause was thunderous, and I felt overwhelmed with emotion. Women approached me afterward, sharing their stories and thanking me for my honesty. I realized I was not alone in my struggles, and that connection filled me with hope. In the following days, I focused on planning my mentorship program, reaching out to local universities, eager to connect with young women ready to carve their paths in finance. As I immersed myself in this new venture, I felt invigorated. I was no longer just Helen, defined by someone else's expectations. I was Helen, a mentor, a leader, and a voice for change. Even as I thrived professionally, Mark continued to reach out, desperate to repair the damage. I ignored his calls and texts, focusing instead on my newfound purpose. I was learning to set boundaries, valuing my well-being above all else. One evening, I got a message from our common acquaintance, Laura. Mark has inquired about you. She wrote, he says he regrets everything. My heart was heavy but I was determined. It's too late for that. I answered. 
I was prepared for whatever happened next since I had moved on. I started to feel comfortable in this new phase of my life as the months went by. As my mentorship program grew in popularity, I was able to establish connections with young women who were motivated to pursue careers in finance. I experienced a revitalized sense of purpose that I hadn't experienced in a while. I held the program's inaugural meeting one Saturday at a nearby cafe. I had a surge of excitement when I observed the participants' excited expressions. Greetings to all of you. I'm delighted you're here, I said, maintaining a steady tone. Today we will share our stories and discuss the challenges we face in our careers. The conversations were vibrant and sincere. After hearing about each woman's story, I became aware of the strength of our bonds. I was now assisting others in finding their voices in addition to sharing my own narrative. A young woman named Mia came up to me after the meeting. I appreciate you making this area. I've been having trouble finding my place in this industry, she remarked, hope shining in her eyes. That's exactly why I started this program. I grinned in response. You belong here and we'll support each other. I became more at ease in my job as a mentor with every encounter. I also started looking into other possibilities for myself. I gladly accepted Helen's invitation to present at another conference. I was more confident and felt less anxious this time. I was prepared to share my victories as well as my challenges. While getting ready for my speech, I thought back on my progress. I was no longer the woman stuck in a bad relationship or the one who had been slapped in front of relatives. I was Helen, a person who had risen above her circumstances and was resolved to change things. When the conference day finally arrived, I experienced the usual flutter of nerves along with excitement as I walked onto the stage. I want to talk about community strength and resilience today. We can conquer anything as a team, I said. The crowd erupted in thunderous applause afterward. I understood that I was connecting, not simply talking. I was utilizing my suffering to become strength and encouraging others. I experienced a profound sense of fulfillment while I was driving home. I was no longer defined by my history, yet it was still a part of who I was. I was creating a purposeful, hopeful life for myself, on my own. I knew I had what it took to confront whatever lay ahead of me, and I was prepared to accept it. 